My name is Ash Carlson from Entertainment Tonight. I am a lover of all things Star Wars, and I will be your moderator today to talk about all things Star Wars, The Bad Batch, premiering May 4th on Disney+. Plus. Um, by the way, if you have questions for our guests today, please put them in the chat function, and we will get to them in a little bit. So let's bring out our guests of honor today and get started. Introducing the voice of The Bad Batch, D. Bradley Baker. I'm the audience. Hello. I'm clapping. <laughs> Supervising Director and Executive Producer, Brad Rao. Hello, everybody. Hello. And Head Writer and Executive Producer, Jennifer Corbett. Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome, everybody. All right. Let's jump right in because we don't have a ton of time. Okay. We met the Bad Batch in the final season of The Clone Wars, but for those who aren't familiar with them, D, will you do the honor of breaking down the batches. Do we call them the batches? And how would you describe them? And I'm here to help if you miss one. We can start with Hunter. All right. Well, uh, of, of, the, of, the, um, of the team, you've got uh, Hunter, who's kind of the, uh, the leader of the pack, uh, who's um, he's, got, he's got tracking skills and, and smell and kind of this heightened sense that, that helps him uh, gauge the terrain. Um, and then you've got um, Tech, who is, is very technically oriented, is always, always has like a handheld device that he's working on and is super cool, super calm, and, and competent with all things technical. Then you got Wrecker, who, uh, to no surprise, <laughs> is the muscles of the group, who's got uh, incredible, uh, incredible strength. And, um, and then you've got, um, who else do we have? Um, Crosshair. Crosshair is the sharpshooter, sharpshooter of the group, who's um, is who's kind of a contrary uh, character and quite interesting in the dynamic. And then you've also got Echo, who is a is a modified clone, an android clone from uh, from the Clone Wars episodes, who was brought on board with the Batch. And um, that's that's the gang, I think. And 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 together they are a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> Would it be like asking you all to pick a favorite child if I asked who was your favorite member of the Bad Batch? Kind of Ash, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fun to be Wrecker because he's so honest and yeah. so clear and funny. Uh, but I, 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 I have great affection for all of them. They're all very interesting fellows. Uh, but Wrecker's... He's probably the furthest away from me as, from all of them. <laughs> and, uh, and he's great fun. I'm a big fan of tech right now. Um, so for Brad and Jennifer, we know that Dave Filoni is overseeing the show and you've both worked with him before. Can you talk a little bit about what it was like to collaborate with him on this series? Yeah, Jen, you wanna go first? Yeah, I, um, I got to work with Dave on Star Wars Resistance, which was such a great experience and getting the chance to develop this series with him, uh, you know, it's kind of like a master class in writing Star Wars. And he, you know, this being a a sequel series of sorts to to the Clone Wars, it was kind of crucial that that he be you know involved in this process very much because these are characters that he's created and it's the world that he knows. But um, every every day, every script is uh, is a learning experience, and it's it's so exciting to to see this show grow and develop with with this team. And he's been fantastic to learn from. Yeah, absolutely. What Dave? He's awesome. I've known Dave for a long time. Uh, when he was starting Clone Wars, I first met him up at up at the ranch, Skywalker Ranch, and I happened to just be starting my own animation studio at that time, so I was unable to join. The Forces of the Clone Wars. It was one of my regrets that I rectified later on Rebels to join as an episodic director and then on Resistance. And he's he's an awesome guy, a good friend, really good. You know, I couldn't think of a better mentor, especially for Star Wars. The stuff he tells us every day is is fantastic and, and amazing. And and yeah, just just collaborating with him and and being able to work with you, Jen, so closely on the show has been awesome. It's been it's been a dream come true. Be a fly on that wall. So th this period of time, like orders, we're going to dig into the episode a little bit, by the way. So this period of time, like order 66, the days leading up to it, the days after are something that fans know, or at least we think we do. But then this show shows yet another unique angle in those, in those days. Can you talk a little bit about what's happening in the galaxy when we pick up this show and the challenges that our uh, bad batchers are going to face? I can, I can take that one. <laughs> 
<laughs> to start off with. Um, I mean, this time period is one of the reasons I got so excited about this show other than this, you know, oddball group of characters, but I just found it intriguing and engaging to watch a series where, you know, we've seen the Clone Wars where it's the height of, of the clone troopers doing what they're meant to do and what they were created for. And, you know, the question became what happens after the war is over, what happens to all these clones who all they know um, is being soldiers, especially for the Bad Batch who do things differently as it is with the Republic and how they fit in once it becomes the empire, because obviously, two very different regimes and um, you know, how they react to this new environment and the new way of doing things and new way of following rules, which again, isn't their, uh, their favorite thing to do. Um, but it, you know, it, it was interesting to just sort of talk about the transition from the Republic to the empire and what that looks like, because it's not, it's not what we saw in the original trilogy where it's the, dominance of the empire it's kind of like the early stages and i found it kind of interesting to show planets and, and places that were happy that the war is over and they don't really understand the implications of of what an empire actually means and it's kind of just laying the groundwork for what what everyone knows the empire to be later on it's an interesting point you make there jen that in the transition the sudden shocking transition from Republic to Empire, that it becomes a suddenly much more rule-based power structure of the galaxy, of the universe, and that uh, the Bad Batch are not so much a rule-based unit. Exactly. <laughs> they're very much a team, but they're not, um, they are not of, uh, like the clones are, where, where it's more of a top-down uh, command structure. And it's, um, it's, it's very interesting to place them in the middle of this uh, transformational moment and to see how that plays out. Definitely. So in the premiere episode, we are introduced to a new character named Omega, and she seems pretty important. What can you tell us about her and how important she will be to the story? And Dee, I, I would love to know more about the dynamic here between Hunter and Omega, because I'm giving I'm getting those um, Mandalorian baby Yoda, like reluctant dad in armor <laughs> vibes. <laughs> so how would you describe them? <laughs> Well, it, it, it's a fascinating relationship that unfolds because at first, of course, the team is not, they're, they're kind of their own sealed unit and they're not, they're certainly not used to having anybody else along or working with anybody else. Uh, although they did, they did bring along Echo and brought Echo on board after he kind of proved himself to them and they, 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 they uh, came together on that. But um yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's interesting uh, in terms of the, of the story and the writing to have this kind of personal relationship with a younger character and to see how that, how that changes and how they accommodate that and how, how that works because it's more of like a, an uncle-niece or a, or a father-child uh, dynamic, but not entirely because Omega, right. uh, uh, Omega is, is her own interesting... Um, uh, potential of of powers, <laughs> maybe, and uh, and so it's interesting to see all of that unfold. But it, it 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 I think it connects you to to the story in a in a personal way. So it's not just an action story, uh, as Star Wars never is. That there that there's a personal story that's also playing out as well. That that uh, that connects you to the uh, to the entire story. Definitely. And for Brad and Jennifer, it is, are we right to focus on her as, as much as I wanted to in the first episode? Is she integral to the story? Yes, Ash, she is definitely. <laughs> she, she, she's so great. Cause we, I mean, we have this awesome team of elite clones and everything we've been talking about in this changing galaxy and this, this time period that as a fan, I'm just so excited to see, cause we haven't seen that much about the rise of the empire. So to have these clinical best of the best soldiers I suddenly fish out of water in this changing galaxy. And then to have this kid that they do um, look to, to help raise in a very parental way. And, and it's a, it's a two way street, honestly, the way, the way that that works, that none of them are really equipped to go out into the world. And, and how do they, you know, how do they eat? They don't have a mess hall to go to. How do they get their gear fixed? How do they get fuel for their, for their ship? These are all things that, wait a minute, Oh yeah, we didn't. We didn't have to deal with that last week. Now we got to deal with it. Are all things we get into? It's really interesting. Awesome. Okay, let's get to some questions from our chat here. So our first question is going to be from Eric from Bro Bible. Hey guys, 
Um, I'm just curious, sort of, I, I felt like this was a lot like Rogue One in the sense that it was sort of stripped down and focused on a group of sort of reluctant ragtag soldiers. And I'm just curious, what's it like to make a show focused on that as opposed to sort of grand characters like Jedi and Sith? That's a massively awesome question. Um, I mean, we, we, we love, we love all of that stuff, um, but it is really interesting kind of off of what we were just saying to deal with this family dynamic, to have the stories be emotionally charged and emotionally based gives, um, gives the action a lot, a lot more texture, honestly. Cause I mean, we, let's face it, we're blowing stuff up and we're, you know, we're having, we're having fun doing that, but to have the emotional um, context of that is, is the challenge I think in any of these stories. And it, for us, I think it helps that we are coming into characters that are familiar and yet we don't know that much about. And it gives us room to kind of play around with how those characters develop. Great. Our next question is going to be from, I'm sorry if I botch everybody's names here, William Devereaux. Yeah, so for, um, for Dee Bradley Baker, your performance as the clones has always been incredible. Did you approach Clone Force 99 any differently than you did in the Clone Wars season seven now that they're headlining their own series? The uh, Clone Force 99 is kind of another step beyond um, what I've been asked to do in the Clone Wars series. The, the clones are, are, the tricky part for them is that the differentiation is much tighter uh, between characters, although that has to be decisive, it has to be clear. The Bad Batch are uh, actually much further apart from each other, which oddly makes it a little bit easier to jump from character to character to character. Um, like, I, I, I mean, for me, it feels like I'm jumping from rock to rock on a stream. I can see the rock, the writing is clear, and that's what I, that's what I jump to, is, is, is that character. And it's like I can see them. I, I feel like I know them, and it actually, <laughs> it actually helps that they're, they're further differentiated in, in vocally in ter and also in terms of their, their, their personality and their, their, their mood, shall we say. Um, so it's, it, it, it's, it comes off looking as more of a magic trick <laughs> than, it, than it does maybe with the clones. Um, but it's, uh, but, <laughs> but it's, still, it's a still a really fascinating process as a voice actor to just, uh, you know, have, have these scenes where I'm just, I'm just talking to myself, just switching from character to character to character as we, as we go through the script, which is typically how we do it. We just go straight through it. It's great. It is. It, it, it's, it's, it's fantastic fun. It's really, really an interesting project. It's, it's impressive to watch him do it in, in, in the room because when we first started, I thought he was going to go a character at a time and just watching him like act out a scene with himself, with yeah. all of these clones, but, but there's no pause. He just, goes right into it and I, I was blown away and each each time we do one of these record sessions I'm I'm just amazed at Dee's talent so oh thank you <laughs> so yeah some, sometimes I accidentally say okay so record oh wait I mean wait Dee <laughs> like, like I'm losing my brain it's all right you can talk to me I don't care <laughs> it's fine I'm here <laughs> it's awesome I love it our next question is from Mike Celestino and he's from Laughing Place hi guys can you hear me mm-hmm Oh, great. Um, so other Star Wars animated series like Rebels and Resistance have established their own kind of unique visual styles. But the look of the Bad Batch definitely matches its predecessor, the Clone Wars. Can you guys talk about why the team felt it was so important to maintain that sense of visual continuity between those two series? Yeah, absolutely. I can I can speak to that. And that's very intentional. That's so cool that, that you picked up on that um, as it's you know, it's a spiritual, the Bad Batch is a spiritual successor to Clone Wars. So we wanted to honor the style and the legacy of that. That being said, the whole team at Lucasfilm and our partners at CGCG, we've just tightened everything up. So the fidelity is tighter, the style is tighter, the rigs are tighter. The way that it's designed is still the legacy of the Clone Wars, but a, um, a little more detail, a little bit more focus. And the work we're, you know, we're doing, you know, for me, having worked on a lot of these shows with a lot of the same people internally, it's just the best team. And I think we're doing our best work ever right now. It's really fun. Can we talk about crosshair for a moment? Uh, just to <laughs> dig in a little bit. Okay, first of all, Dee, I need your reaction to this entire reveal, but I just wanna know what the conversation was about crosshair's journey in this first episode and how big of a threat he's gonna be for the Bad Batch through the rest of the, the season or the series. 
Crosshair is a really interesting uh, linchpin member of the team um, because he his practical um, um, usefulness in the team is that of a sniper. That's someone that stands further back from the rest of the group and just takes them out one by one. And that's very much to his character. He is he's he's not someone who's running around with the team. He's assisting the team. Uh, in a very uh, strategic and and laser focused kind of way, and so his 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 nature is is kind of set to be a part uh, uh, with the team that he is a part of, and so that that very definitely plays out as as the larger uh, kind of political story plays out of this instantaneous you know mega transformation from republic to empire which is a profound as anyone who's watched star wars it's it's a very profound moment in 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 the entire uh story of star wars uh, and that's that's part of what's so interesting is is that you have you have the personal dynamics of these few characters who are who are a lot of fun to hang out with they're really competent really fun and and interesting and 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 that this whole larger process is playing out uh among their uh, dynamic as well. It's 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 quite. There's there's a lot there to unpack, and 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 it it's coming. <laughs> For sure. Um, I want to get to one more question here from Dan Z. Dan, go ahead. Dan, Dan, Dan. Do we lose Dan? Oh, sorry. But maybe it helps. Oh, there me you are. There you are. <laughs> unmute that pesky thing. All right, Jennifer. How did your experiences in the United States Navy help your writing process and vision for the Bad Batch? It's a good question. Um, when I first saw the original story arc um, for the Bad Batch that was meant for the Clone Wars, uh, the final season, I immediately responded to it because I got the dynamic between this, this squad. Um, and I, I understand how... Um, people in the military become like brothers and sisters very closely when you're sent on missions together, when you're in close quarters and kind of the, the camaraderie and, and also the banter that comes with living with people so closely in high stress situations. So I think, you know, that's what I try to bring to it is how, how this squad, even though they are these elite soldiers, they are this, this family, but they don't have to agree all the time and all the things and all the different perspectives that each of them brings because they're all so very different. And um, I think that speaks to, you know, the military. No one comes from the same background. Everybody has their different reasons for doing what they're doing. And um, it, is, it is a family dynamic in real life, so. Well, just to wrap it up here, uh, is there a plan for a finite amount of episodes? I know we're kind of in the beginning, but is is there a plan in place at the moment? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> love a tease, you know? There's always a plan, isn't there? There's a plan. <laughs> I love a tease. I love a good plan. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everybody so much. That's going to be it for the Bad Batch press conference. Thank you to everyone who attended and thank you to our wonderful guests. And the Bad Batch premieres May 4th on Disney+. Plus. May the 4th be with you. Tell your friends and thank you all for attending. May the 4th be Thanks, with you. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much, Ash.